Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. Today I'm going to be opening up this box sent in to me by Pentax, which I do believe contains some samples from their very new and quite exciting slash interesting slash a whole bunch of things, um, V-series of binoculars, monoculars, telescope, um, microscope, you name it. And we're going to start right now. Right, so welcome back um, to this side of the table. But quickly, just before we begin with the unboxing, I just wanted to point out for that for this video, I'm testing out for the very first time this new wireless microphone system, uh, kindly sent to me by Movo to test out and use. Now, primarily, um, I will be using this out in the fields because it, as it being a wireless system, it allows me to separate the microphone from the camera and thus do some pretty cool stuff. But as this is my first test, I'm gonna use it here in the studio just so that I can um, compare the sound to, just as a backup, I'm also still recording using my studio microphone. So um, yeah, I, I do get off fairly regularly about some of the equipment I use, so I just thought it might be of interest to some of you guys. Right, so enough of that, let's, let's get on with the actual unboxing. So as with um, all the other unboxing videos I've, I've put together on this channel, this is genuinely the first time I'm opening up this box. So it's unscripted and the idea being is I'm going to give you my um, initial impressions which are unfiltered, unscripted and um, in some cases um, not in nowhere near as um, well researched as once I do a full review of the product. So um, what is inside is not a complete surprise to me, but at the same time, you know, I haven't um, researched in depth um, on the products. I'm just going to give you my initial impressions. And then the idea is in the future, um, I will do a, a, a full review after having um, had time to fully test and use the products, which will obviously contain way, way more information. So um, please just take this video for what it is. It's an unboxing video um, and we're just going to take um, a look at the products and give and I'll give you my initial impressions and thoughts on it Right, so I've just quickly gone and uh, removed all the excess packaging But as you can see within the box uh, Pentax have sent me uh, two products and in reality each of these is actually a multi uh, function or multi-use device so um, There's tons for me to talk about here um, and thus to ensure that the video doesn't go on and on uh, too long I'm going to actually split this unboxing video into two. So for the first part We're going to talk about the binoculars that convert into uh, two monoculars as well as the spotting scope And then for the the second uh, video We're going to um, focus on the monocular that converts to a microscope So if that's the product that you're interested in just look for the, the next video in this series Right, okay, so before we open up the box, I just want to give you a brief introduction as to what I understand um, about the Pentax VD series 4x20 binoculars. And we will call them binoculars just for a moment now, um, because they, in reality, they're far more than that. So from the illustration over here, you can see that the binoculars, um, they've had one dark side and a, a light side over here. And the reason for that is these binoculars um, have been designed in such a way that you can actually um, split each of the sides apart to um, now um, give yourself a pair of monoculars, um, which will be really interesting to just to see how the, the mechanism works and whether um, taking them apart, putting them back together um, is easy for a start. And then on, on top of that, whether, you know, in, in the future, whether we have any sort of alignment issues or anything like that. Um, but in reality, being able to split a binocular into two is a no-brainer because essentially a binocular is just two monoculars um, bolted together. So it's surprising to me that, uh, to my knowledge anyway, um, no other company has brought um, something similar to market. Um, as I say, I think there's um, uh, the technical um, aspects of being able to make sure that the, the two barrels align up with each other um, is one of the difficulties there. But in, in, um, in terms of um, the idea, it's, it's excellent because um, for a start, you be, you're able to convert um, something um, to essentially half the size. So therefore, there are, there are times where um, having a, a, a device that's half the size of a binocular is very, very useful. And I do actually have a video um, whereby I go, I go through the pros and cons of a binocular versus a monocular um, and compare the two against each other. And I, I really suggest that um, you take a look at that. Um, I'll put a link down below or up the top there. Um, that video because in it I, I just go through in detail um, the different aspects and the differences between a monocular and a binocular 
Uh, and therefore, um, with a device like this, it's quite interesting because you're actually getting both of them in theory um, in one box. So it'll be super interesting um, for me to, um, once I've had a chance to, to test these out and use them just to see how, how well it works. But wait, there's more before we open. Um, this the, the two monoculars um, can then actually be put end on end to each other and you can actually make a spotting scope out of it. Now the interesting thing is here, because of the way the optics work, um, you're taking the four times binocular or the four times monoculars and the resulting magnification you get is then actually 16 times because it's four by four. Um, so you'll have a 16 by 20 spotting scope. Now the objective lens is still obviously only 20 millimeters in diameter. So that's something we will need to look into in terms of its light gathering capability and, and its low light performance. In theory, this idea is, is really interesting and I am really am excited to uh, use and test these out. Right, so let's crack on and, and take a look at what's inside. So uh, this box, I don't know about you, it does remind me of a, a camera box um, and obviously Pentax being a primarily uh, most famous for their um, cameras, uh, it's understandable. Uh, likewise, the instructions uh, look very much like those that you get um, with a camera. So yeah, um, as, as it's pretty standard, the instructions are obviously written on a large sheet of paper and are in just about every single um, language that you could could ever hope for. I won't go into that in too much detail, but I'm pretty sure that they give you all the basic instructions that you will need to know to get this up and running. Okay, so where to begin? Uh, let's quickly just take a look at the next strap. With such a small compact binocular, it's typical and understandable that it's um, unpadded and lightweight. So that's, you know, anything, uh, if you had a large neck strap, it would be um, sort of overkill anyway. So I'm, um, Initially, uh, so very simple next strap, but one thing that's um, really immediately jumping out to me is the fact that you've got these quick release crips. And that's something that I really do like on any sort of neck straps, just because not everyone wants to have a neck strap all the time. And, and you know, if you're having to thread it through the, the, the sliders all the time, it can be just a, a pain to take on and off. So that's something that I really do like. Uh, the strap itself, very simple. Um, looks very well made though, I'll have to say, and very camera-like again. So you can you can see that the, the camera heritage is coming through here. But um, yeah, I do really like the, the quick release clips. And it's sort of interesting to see that there's a whole bunch going on here. But as I said, this, this product um, sort of splits up in that, so it's understandable. So it'll be interesting to see how this all works and comes together. But in terms of the, the quality, yeah, for what it is, very good. Um, and as you can see, you can actually split the strap in two, so I'm assuming one will go for each of the monoculars if, if you wish to split the product up in that way. So there we go, we've got a neck strap. Let's take a look at the case. Uh, impressive, um, that's my initial uh, um, sort of thought on it. it. It looks really well made, nice canvas material. Personally, I like the green colors, um, nicely branded. Um, obviously being quite a unique product, although I mean the shape as a binocular is, is sort of typical so um, but what I'm, I'm sort of alluding to here is the the case itself looks you know bespoke it's not a mass-produced binocular case you know that are made in a factory somewhere by their trillions and used by a whole you know a whole bunch of brands so it looks like a bespoke case nice and smart I really do like it um, the material is as I say excellent stitching I'm just looking around as I'm talking um, excellent again and I like the highlight the details on that so, um, you know, not whilst lightly padded, it's understandable for, for such a small binocular. I do like the bell strap in the back here. Um, sometimes with larger binoculars, you know, they're a bit heavier. To carry it on your on your hip can be a bit much, but this is, you know, it, it does actually feel chunky, the binocular. Um, it doesn't feel, already feels, you know, more heavyweight than a lightweight plastic um, instrument. But even so, that'll be quite fine to hold on your through your belt. And I can imagine it actually on your belt and having this sort of saddlebag type thing come off. Um, yeah, really, really nice. I like that, that case. Um, it's nice that they've got an extra pocket here. Um, so you could be putting in some, some change or, or a cleaning cloth or whatever you need. So really good. Really do like that case. Um, the binoculars themselves, as you can see, fit nicely within. So 
easy to take in and out. So yeah, really a really nice case. Right, so let's move on to the actual binoculars um, themselves. So we can still call them binoculars for now because that's that's how it, it looks. Wow, look at that. Um, I, again, the the green. I do like all the the way it all lines up and the um, the design of them um, is really nice. I, I, my first impression is is it's quite chunky and heavy. Um, uh, definitely. Um, you know, I, I handle quite a few cheaper products these days. Um, a lot of plastic parts and are very lightweight, which has its own advantage. But this, in, in a way, is, is nice and chunky. You, you do feel like you've got a, an expensive or a, a quality piece of equipment in your hands. Um, I like the, the rubber um, on the barrels here, nice and grippy without um, being too, you know, it's quite hard. So sometimes you get a softer rubber, which just attracts a ton of dust and, you know, get dirty quite quickly. So it's really nice, nicely branded with Pentax over there. If you can see, actually they're made in China. So that's interesting. Even a Japanese, famous Japanese company like Pentax um, outsourcing to che uh, cheaper labor markets these days. Um, whether that's good or bad. They, they do feel well made, my initial thoughts. Nice, I mean, they've got metal um, barrels over here. Um, so yeah, uh, they, uh, my initial opinion is they, they look like a quality um, optical instrument. So let's just take a quick look at the, the eye cups. Oh, that's nice and smooth. Um, really nice action to the twist up eye cups. Um, making sure. As you can see, they have a, a single um, intermediate click stop, which is really good because it just gives you that much more flexibility um, to be able to adjust the eye, your eyes to the right distance behind the ocular lens, um, depending on whether you're wearing glasses and the shape of your face, etc. So those, um, the mechanism that is really, really good um, quality. I, I definitely feeling it's it's high quality here. Uh, as you can see, there's almost no movement. I mean, and that's really good because often on cheaper binoculars that don't use lots of plastic parts, you move the eye cup and it goes, you know, it moves about quite a bit. So there's, you know, you can feel that the, they put together really well there. So that's really, really excellent. Okay, so next to talk about a little, as I like this, um, the metal rings on the, the outsides of the ocular lenses and there's a big gap in between the actual objective lens over there and the, the end of the, the barrel. This will provide, <clears throat> I think it's done actually because when we're gonna stick the two barrels together, but even so there's, it, it offers the lenses plenty of protection, um, be that from uh, dust, uh, rain, or, or from scratching. So that's nice to see. They feel really nice in the hands. Um, and just having looked at the introductory uh, video, to pull them apart, as you can see, there's, a, there's something over here. From what I know, you just, literally just pull them apart. It's a bit scary to do so the first time. Um, before I pull them apart, I just want to have a feel. There's a little bit of, you know, I'm thinking it would be impossible to have it pull apart without it being, but even so, with, if you didn't know that this came apart, I don't think you would guess it. Um, so it looks to be well made. Um, and I'm just well, I'm hoping this, I don't break a pair of binoculars on camera. Let's go, oh, there we go. Okay, wow, look at that. Um, so it has a, a, a couple of ball bearings, I'm thinking. Yes, they're spring-loaded, um, so they fit into each other. Oh, there we go. Now you know how to do it. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, so it, it comes apart quite, you know, it's robust, but quite easily at the same time. Um, so as I say, what's, I think the trick to these, before I talk about the monoculars, is going to be whether, over time, this mechanism um, remains as good as it is now and the barrels continue to line up with each other because I think that'll be the only um, uh, That will be one of the things that I'll definitely look out of, um, As I test these and as I said, I'll write a full review on this product um, I'll put a link down in the description once I've finished the review. So do look out for that in the future But for the moment um, I have to say that this does um, It's it looks really really well made. I'm, I'm actually super impressed um, and then just a waterproof, yes, so this, this binocular is fully waterproof. I think filled with um, either nitrogen or hydrogen gas to make it fog proof as well. This is pretty good as well, just because as you can see, we can now, we could fit this to a tripod. 
Um, for a four times monocular, that perhaps wouldn't be necessary um, for most people, but once we make it into a um, telescope or spotting scope like that, um, it, um, because now we have a 16 times magnified device, um, I think fitting it to a, uh, a, on occasion to a tripod would be um, a good way to go just to make sure that you get a steady, steady view. But um, I have to say, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really a neat little product and I'm, I'm super, I'm, I'm, I'm really um, can't wait to test it out. So what I'm going to do, and oh, let's just talk before I do actually, let's just talk about, it's interesting to see how the two monoculars, obviously with the, the thing here, they, um, the way they join together, they, they are slightly different from each other. I'm just looking how you would hold them. So it's quite nice to have these bits over here. Um, whilst it makes it obviously a little less compact than if, if it was just a barrel, it does give you something to sort of hold on to, just to give yourself a secure grip. Um, they feel nice, you know, they feel nice and chunky, well-made. I keep on going back to that, but they really do. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I think probably what you would do is if you were sharing these binoculars with someone, say you went to a sporting event, someone said, you know, please can I borrow your binoculars? You can split them in a half and say, yeah, you take that half. You probably give this side to the person with the smaller hands um, and the larger hands. Great for kids as well. You know, possibly a little bit expensive, um, you know, maybe supervise their use just so that they don't throw them on the ground and put their fingers into the lenses and things like that but it would be great for them to uh, be able to use. Quite often a monocular is a little bit easier for kids to use than a, a binocular, just because, um, well, it depends. Sometimes with the younger kids, um, they don't quite get the idea of closing one eye, but you know, for slightly older kids, it's fine. I like the way this fits together. Um, I wonder how easily it's, it's going to do to focus it. And if we just go back to the, the focusing, obviously because you can split them in half, they wouldn't have a, a single focusing wheel as you would with many binoculars. Um, it's got an individual eyepiece focus on each, so you would be able to focus each separately. This is also important once you connect it back together just to make sure that it lines up optically with each other. So yeah, I'm just going to pause the video quickly and take a look through these and I'll come back with some thoughts and comments in a moment. Okay, so I'm back and having just um, looked out the window at the back of my office here, I have to say my initial thoughts once again are, are very impressed, um, especially with the actual binoculars uh, or even actually the monocular. You know, being a, a fairly lower powered device, you know, only four times magnification, you know, even with um, very small 20 millimeter objective lenses, um, today is an overcast, dull day, and yet the image was was bright. So obviously, um, they, these these uh, binoculars are fully multi coated, um, and obviously use fairly or good quality. I will be finding out this more, and obviously in the future, um, quality optics. But the important point here is with a low uh, magnification, and even though the lenses are only twenty millimeters in diameter, you get as you can see. I'll just try and point the camera in the right again. You get um, this really large, um, four goes into 25 times, so really large five millimeter um, exapupil. So an exapupil, for those who don't know, is the um, side size of the shaft of light coming out the back of the binocular. You can see it's over there. Um, so it's five millimeters diameter, which is really good. You know, it um, beats a uh, 10 by 42, for example, which was a 4.2 millimeter exapupil. You know, so you, you're looking at a, a binocular that's in terms of its low light capability is sort of on a par with an 8x42, which is really good. I mean, obviously there's gonna be slight differences just because of the size of the objective lens is different, but as a good guide. So, um, as I said, the image was nice and bright and I, I'm expecting it to continue to do very well, even in very low light conditions. Um, and just a quick note, I will have a link down below to explain all about the extra people, because it's, for me, it's always uh, really an interesting uh, part to understand and, and if you're thinking about binoculars, it's something that you should understand as well. Okay, so um, the binoculars, um, yeah, as I said, the image looked really nice and bright, um, nice and sharp, and um, lining it up was, was no problem at all. Um, and so it'll be interesting to just see over time how it continues to do so, um, and I had no problem with sort of um, alignment issues or anything like that. Then with the monoculars, uh, likewise, um, and, and once again, I'll just refer to you back to the video that I've made in the past of binoculars versus monoculars. Um, so you get a very similar view, 
Um, it's just a little bit less immersive because you're only using one eye instead of two. So the monocular will be nice just for gathering information as opposed to enjoying the view. So, you know, if you, you know, needed to spot something out or, you know, you're at a sporting event, share it's great for sharing and things like that. Um, but obviously you still have the same size exit pupil. Um, but uh, because there's only one lens capturing light, um, it's, it's slightly different. And because you're only using one eye, you do get a slightly different experience using in a monocular versus a binocular. But even so, very impressive. And, and for those of you who, you know, may always, uh, it, it seems a common trend for everyone wants more and more powerful binoculars or monoculars. Um, for me, it's really refreshing. So, you know, some of my favorite binoculars are a six by 32, um, six times magnification, seven times magnification binoculars, just because um, it brings you so many other advantages like a nice wide field of view. Um, you also get a much steadier image. It's easier to look at. Um, and on top of that, um, it tends to be a lot brighter. You get a much brighter um, image. And, you know, in comparison to an optic that uses the same quality level of, of, of the optics and coatings, obviously. So, yeah, I was impressed to, to, be, to um, right off the bat. Um, focusing the binoculars are nice and easy. Um, it's just a, an individual eyepiece focusing mechanism, except obviously the, the focusing mechanism is on the, it's not actually on the eyepiece, it's, it's more towards the objective lens. It just takes a little bit getting used to, but it, it wouldn't take long if you were using these on a regular basis. The next thing to talk about is when you convert it to a spotting scope. Um, once again, worked. it took me a little while to just um, work out the, the focusing between the two. But once you get an image, um, it's a little bit harder to actually get an image. Um, and that is because it goes back to the exit pupil. Um, and I just quickly want to explain. So if, we, if I look over there, you look again, just to remind you, you get a nice large um, five mm exit pupil. And then if we look at... We can look again now and try and get it so the camera can see it. There we go. As you can see, it's now tiny because we now have a 16 times magnification, but we haven't increased the size of the objective lens. So 16 goes into 20, you know, just over one. So the, the exit pupil is roughly um, a millimeter, just over a millimeter in diameter. Um, so obviously a lot, lot smaller. Now this has an effect um, not only on the um, its low light capability, um, so when the pupils in your eyes are, are dilated in, in low light conditions, the problem is this, um, this uh, such a small exit pupil will not be supplying your eyes with enough light for them to, um, for you to perceive a bright image. It's the best way to put it around. Um, but in, in, uh, even on overcast conditions like today, yes, I could see that the image wasn't quite as bright as when I was using each of the uh, monoculars individually but even so it didn't look um, terribly dull yeah, um, the, the other slight issue with having such a small exit pupil is it's quite hard to line and with a high power because 16 times is actually extremely high powered for a binocular monocular is actually lining up your eye with that the light coming out of the the device is, is just a little bit more difficult so it can be sometimes a bit difficult to um, immediately get an image um, so it just takes a little bit more working with. In terms of image shake, yes, um, I do like the fact I was holding it like this and it's a natural way to hold it and you can get quite a nice steady image. Um, but even so, no matter how hard you try, you're going to get some sort of little um, shakiness to your hands. So if you were going to use it as a spotting scope on a regular basis, I would definitely recommend um, attaching it to a tripod as with I would with any binocular or, or spotting scope. Another thing to point out with, though, yes, it's um, fun and it will be useful for just, you know, um, if you have to um, gain some information of something in the distance. But if you were looking for a device um, to get you clear, bright images and you, you often wanted to use very high power, you might want to obviously go for a, a larger spotting scope um, with bigger lenses and, and obviously can capture more light and would have a larger exit pupil. But having said that, for what it is, um, a very, very compact device, um, I'm really, really am impressed. Um, the probably um, the, 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 the spotting scope aspect is interesting and will be useful, you know, just on occasions when you want to see far off into the distance. But I can really see people finding the, the binocular for one really useful. I love the four times magnification. I, I mean, I, I, I know high powered fanatics out there will, will be uh, 
going crazy right now but in reality a, a lower power it really has so many advantages and i uh, i don't i urge you for um for the right applications don't be put off by a lower power like backyard birding i'm um, even going in a forest on, on walks and hikes you know often you don't need any more high uh, higher power than this um for sporting events this will be a, a incredible imagine um because of the wide field of view you'll be able to capture all the um, on on field action or on track action if you, you like motorsport or, or athletics or something tennis um, anything like that cricket football and you'll be able to catch all the, um, the action without having to pan the, the view about and then you know invariably someone next to you is going to ask if they can borrow your binoculars and it'd be fun to just split it in half and um, really small to put in your bag and take take along to things like um, also to concerts outdoor concerts these would be amazing um, and perhaps I'm thinking of even um, uh, galleries and, and things like that where you want to look a bit closer at uh, you know paintings or, or whatever so um, for the for the right uses I can I can really see um, a lot of, of, of people um, um, getting a lot of benefit out of these and it's it's a really is a fun and extreme and, and on first impression is extremely well made so as I said I'm gonna leave this video here for now I've already gone one way too long um, I do look out for the full review and as soon as I get that review done I will link to it in the description down below um, so now I'm just going to stop this video now and I'm going to slip over to the second half of the of the video and we will talk about um, the monocular and come uh, microscope so thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time cheers for now